Six million years ago, the first homininians, the Australopiths, diverged from the chimpanzees. Like their ancestors, they had thick body hair, consumed plants, hunted together, and communicated through limited sounds and gestures. Also their height was around 135 centimeters, 4.4 feet, but, unlike chimpanzees, they fed both on trees and on the ground, in a more open habitat. 1,700,000 years later, Australopiths had feet better suited for walking than chimps, and inhabited woodland and bushland corridors between savannas. After around 700,000 years, Australopithecus, a fundamentally bipedal descendant, dispersed throughout eastern and southern Africa. They were a bit smaller, at 130 centimeters, 4.3 feet tall, but were still partially arboreal, fully hair-covered, and fed on plants and easy-to-catch animals. Within 400,000 years, homininians started to nap stone tools to cleave meat off carrion or to break bones to extract the marrow. The Stone Age has begun. Within 400,000 years, homininians started to nap stone tools to cleave meat off carrion or to break bones to extract the marrow. The Stone Age has begun. One million years later, their descendants, Homo, made simple pebble stone tools, with a few flakes chipped off with a hammerstone, and used them in butchering. They had thick body hair, but were taller, averaging 135 centimeters, 4.4 feet, and had an increasingly generalized diet. After 200,000 years, Homo erectus spread from Swartgrins in Africa, to Shanchen in Asia, lost most of their body hair, and became much taller, at 165 centimeters, 5.4 feet. They hunted and gathered in coordinated groups, eating medium to large animals, such as bovines or elephants, and they also cared for injured or sick group members. Within 200,000 years, these hunter-gatherers reached Sedif in North Africa. Also, occasionally, Homo erectus started to use fire from wildfires for cooking. 70,000 years later, Homininians settled in Legong, Malaysia. After around 30,000 years, a population of hunter-gatherers arrived at Damani Sea, in Georgia, over the Levantine Corridor. Within 40,000 years, Homo erectus made Acheulean stone tools, like hand axes with sharper edges, including bifacial tools, such as picks, knives, and cleavers. Some 160,000 years later, they inhabited Java. After 30,000 years, Lazignan Lasibi in Western Europe was first populated. The flake tradition spread across Southern Europe through the Balkans. Around 70,000 years later, Homo erectus settled at Tirumpakam in southern India. Within 100,000 years, Homininians arrived at the Kazarnika cave in Bulgaria. Another 40,000 years later, hunter-gatherers reached Xiaochongleng in the Nihewen Basin. After 160,000 years, the first Homininians populated the Iberian Peninsula, from Adapuerca in the north, to Barranco Leon in the south. Some 200,000 years later, Bali was inhabited. Within 150,000 years, Homo erectus arrived at Monte Poggiolo in the Italian peninsula. After another 50,000 years, hunter-gatherers inhabited Happysburg in Norfolk. At the same time, Homo erectus settled in the Bose Basin. Not long after, Homininians in the Kashafrid Basin made core chopper, simple flakes, and tools such as scrapers, notches, and borers. 25,000 years later, the Soanian culture, from the Sawalik Hills, manufactured tools on quartzite pebbles, cobbles, and occasionally on boulders. Within another 25,000 years, hunter-gatherers lived in the Myanmar region. After 40,000 years, Homo erectus made a sea crossing of several miles and reached the Luzon Island in the Philippines. Another 10,000 years later, the Homo erectus that dispersed across Europe and stayed in Africa evolved into Homo heidelbergensis. They were as tall as their predecessors, but had wide chests and were robust overall. They ate more big game, 
with meat becoming an essential dietary component. Around the same time, Homo erectus crossed long distances on water and reached the Flores Island. Within 100,000 years, caves are globally used for habitation. Soon, hunter-gatherers settled in Mauer, Germany. After 100,000 years, Homo erectus inhabited the caves in Lang Son and Nguyen provinces in Vietnam. In the meantime, Hominians reached the Korean peninsula. Also, Homo heidelbergensis known as the Saldanha Man, settled near Hopefield, South Africa. At the same time, wooden spears have been used for hunting, from Katu Pan 1, South Africa, to Boxgrove in England. Not long after, Vertestolos, in the relatively warm and fertile Carpathian Basin, has been populated. Within 90,000 years, Homo erectus lived in the Longtandong Cave on the side of Wanziashan Mountain, in Hexian. After around 10,000 years, scrapers were used to prepare Hydazat Hoxni in England. 65,000 years later, Homo naledi, another Homo descendants who emerged in South Africa, were, like their ancestors, more arboreal than other Homo lineages. They consumed gritty foods in, while they were a bit taller than their ancestors, at 145 centimeters, 4.7 feet, they were still much shorter than the other contemporary Homo. Within 35,000 years, due to advancements in fire management, use of fire at campsites became significantly more abundant. Campfires provided light and warmth, heat for cooking, served as beacons, and drove away insects and predators. Hominians have learned how to control fire. Campfires provided light and warmth, heat for cooking, served as beacons, and drove away insects and predators. Hominians have learned how to control fire. Hafted stone-tipped spears become much more common in both Europe and Africa. In the meantime, Homo heidelbergensis reached Schoningen, in Germany. Also, early Neanderthals were descendants who lived mostly in France, Spain, and Italy, in Western Europe. They had lighter skin due to lack of sunlight, and were also a bit smaller, at 160 centimeters, 5.2 feet. 15,000 years later, the Denisovans, who had Neanderthal-like build and facial features, settled around the Denisova cave. They had dark skin, brown hair, and brown eyes. After 25,000 years, Homo sapiens, humans, have descended from Homo heidelbergensis populations in Africa, from Floresbad as far as Jebel or Hoot. They were narrow-chested, had a gracile build, and made bone tools. Within 60,000 years, Hominians present at above 4,000 meters high in the Tibetan Plateau, left impressions of hands and feet. Around the same time, Hominians slept on grass beddings made of insect-repellent plants. Soon, Neanderthals produced tar through the dry distillation of birch bark and used it as a backing on small stone tools. In the meantime, Neanderthals adopted the Levelwa technique to produce smaller and sharper knife-like Mousterian tools as well as scrapers. 10,000 years later, due to fewer food resources on the island of Flores, Homo erectus descendants, Homo floresiensis, shrank to just 110 centimeters, 3.5 feet tall. After around 5,000 years, Homo sapiens arrived at the Misliya cave in Israel, outside Africa. Within 5,000 years, during the Ice Age, Britain was covered in ice sheets and became uninhabited. Some 10,000 years later, Neanderthal spread to the Apodema Cave in southern Greece. After 10,000 years, the Denisovans were present in a high altitude, low oxygen environment and reached the Baishia Karst Cave. Around 10,000 years later, Karain Cave, in southern Anatolia, was inhabited by Neanderthals. Also, Neanderthals exploited marine resources on the Iberian, Italian, and Peloponnesian peninsulas, where they waded or dived for shellfish. 
Within 20,000 years, after the Ice Age, Neanderthals' numbers increased dramatically in Western, Central, Eastern, and Mediterranean Europe. At the same time, the Annamite Mountains caves have been occupied by Denisovans. Not long after, Homo sapiens reached the Western Sahelian zone. Meanwhile, the Sangone manufacturing style developed from the earlier Acheulean types. In addition to the stone tools, bone and antler picks were also used, especially for grubbing. Around the same time, the San, human hunter-gatherers who manufactured Sangone tools, expanded to southern Africa. During droughts, they made sip wells by scrapping a deep hole where the sand is damp, and inserting a long hollow grass stem to collect water into egg bowls. San economy was a gift economy, based on giving each other gifts regularly. And they were an egalitarian society. Women were treated as relative equals in decision-making and may be leaders of their own family groups. At the same time, the Pygmies humans expanded to Central African forests and made Sangone stone and bone tools. Not long after, early Homo sapiens from Mauritania, to a drawer baus in Niger, up to the Nile Valley, used the Levawa technique to make Atyrian stone tools. After 5,000 years, hafting was widespread. Scrapers, knives and points all were hafted, and a wide range of activities were facilitated. Meanwhile, the diet of early humans included seafood obtained by beachcombing, creating shell middens in Eritrea. Around the same time, humans crossed the Bab el Mandeb Strait and the Arabian Peninsula, settling in Malaya. Within 5,000 years, Neanderthals reached Tabun Cave in Israel. Soon, the Neanderthals spread up to the Denisova Cave. In the meantime, Fur clothing became widely used by people. Neanderthals crafted simple clothes similar to blankets and ponchos. After 14,000 years, humans settled in Oman. Within another 6,000 years, vocal languages have begun diversifying. Also, humans used containers found in nature, such as hollow pumpkin-like fruits, for storing food, to carry it more easily, and also to protect it from other animals. At the same time, beads were made at school cave by Homo sapiens, from Nasarius sea snail shells. Not long after, people who reached the Kafsa cave through the Nile Valley, buried the dead and practiced ceremonial funerary rites. Meanwhile, hunter-gatherers near Wadi Halfa slept in a dome shelters of skins or brush. 10,000 years later, Pygmies humans made semliki harpoons to spear catfishes. After around 8,000 years, pierced and ochred Nasarius shell beads were used by the Atyrians as personal adornment. Within 8,000 years, the Toba supervolcano erupted in Sumatra, with ash falling as far as Lake Malawi in East Africa, leading to a worldwide decrease in temperature for several years. Some 4,000 years later, Neanderthal burials take place in areas of Europe and the Middle East, Goods, like flint tools, are as low left in the grave. Around the same time, humans at Blumbo's Cave, in South Africa, consumed fish and shellfish, and made shell beads. Soon, stone segments that were inserted in axe hafts were covered with an adhesive composed of plant gum and red ochre. After 3,000 years, like other endemic fauna on Luzon, Homo luzonensis shrunk in size to around 145 centimeters, 4.8 feet, due to insular dwarfism. Around 3,000 years later, humans used bows and stone arrows for hunting and aggression. Soon, bone arrows will also be used. Within 3,000 years, humans tied together animal skins using shards of bone as needles, with animal sinew or plant material as thread. Another 1,000 years later, Emerin was a Homo sapiens culture that used Amire points in numerous stone blade tools, including curved knives. In the meantime, Neanderthals returned in Britain. Also, Neanderthals used plants as medicines, not necessarily effectively. After 5,000 years, humans' descendants spread along the coastal route around Arabia and Persia to the Indian subcontinent.
Some 4,000 years later, bone has been used for making tools by virtually all hunter-gatherer societies. Within 1,000 years, Homo sapiens migrations continued along the Asian coast to Southeast Asia and Oceania, colonizing Majedbebe in northern Australia. Humans became seafarers, proof of their abstract thinking and planning depth. Fifty thousand years ago, humans became seafarers, proof of their abstract thinking and planning depth. Soon, Near Eastern humans arrived in North Africa. In the meantime, Denisovans made sewing needles. Also, one group of humans migrated north to the steppes of Central Asia. Two thousand years later, Cro-Magnons, the European descendants of humans, made Bohunitian tools, similar to Emerin in Levant. At the same time, humans who settled in the Fahin Lina cave, in Sri Lanka, used bows and arrows. After 1,000 years, humans settled in the Taban Caves, in the Philippines. Another 1,000 years later, the Amarian culture in Levant made elongated blades with some curves. Not long after, hunter-gatherers reached Tam Pa Ling Cave in the Annamite Mountains. Within 500 years, people made cave paintings depicting life-size pigs, in the Liang Tadong Cave in Indonesia. After around 500 years, humans populated Central Asia. Meanwhile, Aboriginal Australians, who descended from Eastern Eurasians, spread to the Cranebrook Terraces. Around the same time, the Eleusian culture of Homo sapiens who settled in Italy, made and used beads from shells of marine mollusks. Soon, hunter-gatherers inhabited the Perth area. In the meantime, humans expanded northward into western Siberia, reaching the Irtysh River. Two thousand years later, the Aurignacians made pendants, bracelets, blades from prepared cores, and produced cave art. They also made flutes carved from bird bone and mammoth ivory, that were able to play distinct melodies. Music was an integral part of the societies. Within 1,000 years, Cormusans developed tools not only from stone and animal bones, but also from hematite. At the same time, humans arrived in the New Guinea Island. Not long after, humans made fish hooks in the Jeremalai Cave, on the Timor Island. 1,000 years later, East Asians spread up to the Tianyuan Cave area. After another 1,000 years, humans have arrived on the island of Tasmania. Meanwhile, Australo-Melanesians were the first people to inhabit the Maluku Islands. Around the same time, Homo sapiens settled near Lake Mungo. Soon, humans reached Mamontovaya Kurya, in the European Russian Arctic. Within 2,000 years, the Baradoshchen culture produced blades and bladelets using soft hammer from single-platform prismatic cores. Around 1,000 years later, Aboriginal Australians and Papuans diverged from each other. After 1,000 years, Paleo-Siberian peoples diverged from ancient East Asians and expanded northwards into Siberia. Within another 1,000 years, Homo sapiens arrived at Kent's Cavern, in England. In the meanwhile, from the Emerin culture evolved the Levantine Aurignacian, who made narrow blade points and carvings of animals with ochre painting. Also, the Aurignacians made statuettes of animals and figurines of women from mammoth tusks. One thousand years later, dyed fibers, made from wild flax, and textile-like materials were made in caves in Georgia. After around one thousand years, Gravettians have developed blunted back knives and tanged arrowheads, but clubs, stones and sticks were still the primary hunting tools. They lived in caves or semi-subterranean or rounded dwellings which were typically arranged like small villages. 
Within 1,000 years, stones attached to sticks with strips of leather or animal sinew were being used as hammers with handles. Not long after, humans have spread to Japan. Meanwhile, ancient North Siberians, relatives of West Eurasian hunter-gatherers, settled the Yana rhinoceros horn. 2,000 years later, Homo sapiens populated the Tibetan plateau. Around the same time, the Bismarck and Solomon's Islands were inhabited by people coming from the New Guinea. Soon, hunter-gatherers in Poland made boomerangs from mammoth tusks. In the meantime, Neanderthals faced extinction. Homo sapiens are now the only surviving hominidians on the planet. Also, Aboriginal Australians settled in Alice Springs. Within 1,000 years, the Gravettians hunted mammoths for meat, fat, hides for tents and large bones and tusks for building winter shelters. Some 2,000 years later, the weavers produced a variety of cordage types, like woven nets, plated basketry and sophisticated twined and plain woven cloth. At the same time, many Venus figurines were made of fired clay in Europe. After 500 years, northern Europe was largely covered by ice, with ice sheets passing through Germany and Poland. The last ice age is now in full swing. Around 1,500 years later, Paleo-Indians from Siberia have crossed into the Americas across the Beringia Land Bridge, following herds of large animals along ice-free corridors. Not long after, the Australians cremated their dead. Meanwhile, people made very large engravings in the Cusack Cave, with stone tools on the walls, or with fingers on clay soil. Within 1,000 years, Ancient North Eurasians were early West Eurasians who mixed with East Asians, and some evolved lighter skin tones and blonde hair. Around the same time, the Maltha people on the Angara River built semi-subterranean houses using large animal bones for the walls, and reindeer antlers covered with animal skins for the roof. They gave symbolic meaning to the serpent, the labyrinth, the sunbird, the shaman flight, the rebirth and the goddess, as mother of man's second birth, protectress of the hearth, and lady of wild things. After 1,000 years, the Keberin were a highly mobile nomadic population of hunters and gatherers, who made microlithic tools. They used stone mortars and pestles to crush wild grains and other plant material. Also, the Mekta Afilu made Iberomorujan tools, with backed stone bladelets. Within 600 years, humans made fish hooks from sea snail shells in the Sakatari Cave in the Okinawa island of Japan. Another 400 years later, in the final Gravettian, the Salutrian backed edge blades were long and narrow. At the same time, the Halfin people made halfa flakes, backed microflakes, backed microblades, and a multitude of rock paintings. After 2000 years, Veradoshchans were followed by the Zarzians, who manufactured microliths, and extended north into Gobustan and into eastern Iran. Not long after, indigenous Australians painted with their fingers thousands of square meters in the Kunalda cave in lines and patterns. Meanwhile, the Gravettians made woven fishnets. Around the same time, Southern Ancestral East Asians spoke an early Austroasiatic language. Soon, during the Ice Age, Atyrian hunter-gatherers migrated into tropical and coastal Africa, due to the hyper-aridification of the Sahara. <laughs>